Hey, I'm Jake Fondering with the Dallas Cycling Lab. This is Lance Hepler, also with the Dial Cycling Lab. Thanks for coming back. Yep. Uh, today we're gonna do a quick review, a little unboxing, and we're gonna talk about the Garmin Varia 515 Radar. Pretty cool stuff, man. It is fantastic. It's one of my favorite uh, biking products that I use every day. Uh, hand to heart, I feel like I'm naked when I'm riding outside without this thing. I've yep. been using this since they came out with the first iteration of like the little box looking thing. <laughs> right. Um, which was what, a little over five years ago. And then they had the, the next, the second generation, which was the 510 and now we're on the 515. So let's unbox this bad boy all right. and see what it's all about. So in the box, um, you're gonna have pretty much the radar and some little doohickeys. Pull this out here, get a little charging cable little owner's manual, some mounts. Why don't you pull those out real quick? And ta-da, we've got the Garmin Varia 515. 515. It's a, a radar that picks up cars when they are approaching you from behind. Correct. So pretty much kind of gives you eyes in the back of your head through audible alerts and little um, heads up display on Correct. either your Garmin head your unit, Garmin your, head your unit. computer, you can use a Wahoo or you can actually use your phone now that they've got the Bluetooth enabled one. We've got a little simple button here on the top. That's the only button on here. It turns it on, it changes through the different modes and there's a couple different flash modes that you can put this on that will give different kinds of brightnesses and it will allow for different battery lives as well. So, Correct. <laughs> so you've got your seat post, you've got some, the little mounting piece that goes on there and it seriously just goes on with a basic rubber band that they uh, they provide you. I have been riding this for, like I said, over five years now, taking it on and off just about every single ride that I've done. This is the only hard part of the whole setup is getting that rubber band to come around. So, and now it's on there. So out of all of these rides, even on my gravel bike, <laughs> even on my gravel bike, I've never once experienced this thing coming off. Nope. As a matter of fact, I had the unfortunate uh, experience of being hit by a car at a pretty high rate of speed, stayed on. And that still stayed on. Yes. Yeah, I was hit from front, not the rear, but um, so it didn't get to do its job, but right. <laughs> it, it still stayed on. Uh, at least that's what they tell me because I have no recollection. Anyway, um, that's how it goes on. And it's a, it's a great piece of technology that has a bunch of upside. Let's run through some of the things that you can expect to get out of this. So for sake of just understanding the battery life on it, you're gonna get anywhere from what? Six hours to 16 hours? Anywhere from six hours to 16 hours. There's four different modes uh -huh. with it. A solid mode where the light is just on solid. There's a Peloton mode if you're riding with a group. There's a night flashing mode and there's a day flashing mode. So obviously the light is going to be brighter during the day flash mode and uh, so it uses more battery. It, it can get up to 16 hours of battery life, which is fantastic. Yep. It, it's just one of the things when I finish my ride, I take it off, I plug it in, I make sure it's charged every time. Yep. And the first iteration good. of this thing, I had it on and I did the, uh, the Seattle to Portland ride, 206 miles. It took us almost 10 hours of elapsed time. It stayed on the entire time. It, it worked, did. It worked for the whole ride. So, and the battery life has only gotten better with the different flash modes that you have on there. So, here's my personal one that I use. This is the last model. This yep. is the 515. This is the 510. Doesn't quite have the same battery life. Correct. I usually always um, ride mine on solid mode. Yep. I like the solid mode because when a car approaches behind you, it actually starts to flash. Yep. It starts out solid, solid. and the car will come and all of a sudden it'll start to flash and that will catch the motor's eye. Yes. And then hopefully they will go around you as opposed to through you. But in solid mode, yep. I only get about four hours out of this. Yes. Nah, not too many times though that you're riding more than four hours. Well, <laughs> I, I gotta remember who we're talking to here. Sometimes I ride more than four hours. <laughs> from a, a car's perspective, they actually can see this thing from quite a distance away, and it actually starts to pick them up at 140 meters away. So that's like a what, a football field and a half? A football field and a half away, it will pick up a something moving towards you. Basically, you'll get your Garmin head unit, and then all of a sudden it'll give you a little audible beep, and then you'll see the rails on the sides of the, the Garmin that we use, or yep. Oahu, or if you're using maybe the, the app as well, will light up orange, and then you'll see a little dot that's gonna be on the bottom right-hand corner. And as the car approaches closer to you, that little dot approaches closer to the top of your screen. Once the car passes and you'll, you'll actually see a car come by you, it will flash green, meaning all clear. It's safe behind you. Now, this thing's crazy though, because if there's a line of, I don't know, four, five, six cars, yep. it will pick up 
All of them. All of them. All of them. And yeah. it's amazing because you just see them coming by and you're like, oh, there it goes. I wouldn't always 100% trust it. I've had very, very few times where it hasn't picked up a car. And typically the only time that it does that is if the car is going at the same rate of speed as Correct. you. I can't pick up a difference in velocity. The, the way it works, so it's the same thing. If you're riding in a group of cyclists, mm -hmm. you're all riding at the same speed. It doesn't pick up all the cyclists behind you. Mm -hmm. But if somebody is attacking you, <laughs> it will see that there's a somebody coming faster. So it can see motorcycles coming, Correct. as well as bicycles, as long as they're going at a different rate of speed than, gotcha. than you are. Gotcha. Yeah. And just to jump back into this little thing real quick, uh, we, we did our unboxing here. It comes with the little USB cord. Everybody in this day and age pretty much assumes that you have a thing to plug this into to charge it. Yeah. Just got a simple little port on the back that's um, pretty waterproof too. I've ridden this when it's been torrential rain yeah. and I haven't had any issues. I've had no issues. There are different kinds of seat posts. Some are flatter, some are rounder, some are actually more aero. So it does come with different pieces to adapt to your particular seat. And if you've got a thinner seat post, it does have a smaller rubber band that yeah. you can put on there as well. So just wanted come back to that. That's how. The, uh, the next thing is third party compatibility. So Garmin, when it first came out, it only worked with Garmin devices and it only worked with like their Garmin head units. They're compatible with Garmin devices, with Wahoo devices. The new iteration also will connect by uh, BLE. Yep, the Bluetooth. And so, not just Ant Plus, so it will connect to your cell phone, phone exactly. as well. So they actually have an app that you can There's download. There's a app. That you can just have it on your phone and be running, and you can just basically use it like you would on a computer. There are other apps out there like Ride With GPS. Ride With GPS. So if you're using Ride With GPS and you're following one of their routes, that it will actually work in unison with their If you're route using your, your phone for a head unit, correct. basically. Correct, yeah. correct. So some pretty cool functions, and it's kind of nice to see that they've opened that up because it's really about safety and I Correct. think that that's something that's something you just don't skimp out on. You've got to share that with everybody. Right. Chances are if you're watching this video right now you've probably watched a few other videos and chances are you probably watched DC Rainmaker's video. They actually um, figured it out that they were able to go into the Garmin Connect app through the IQ app. Correct. And, and actually get analytics from the amount of cars that are passing you. It's actually a, a Garmin Connect IQ field okay. that you can download into okay. your, your Garmin. Garmin. Okay, so what what all can you see when you download those fields? You can see how many vehicles passed you, uh -huh. uh, what speed they were going, okay. and where on an overlay map exactly where those vehicles passed you. If you think about it, if you start to maybe go back and look at some historical data and look at some heat maps, you can kind of get a feel for the volume of traffic on particular roads and the quality of the traffic that are out on those roads. Right. So, you know, is it a 35 mile an hour road and people habitually are driving 55 miles an hour? Or right. are they passing you really close or not paying attention or whatnot? So I think that that's kind of some useful data that could be something that, you know, we can use historically over time. Top five reasons. Top five reasons. Top five reasons why you should use the Garmin Varia radar. First and foremost, I think this one's just pretty much low hanging fruit, safety. Yes, absolutely. You want to know that there's cars coming behind you and actually if there's a line of five cars and not just one when one passes. Yeah. So uh, another thing too is when you're looking down at this, you're, you, you still are able to keep eyes on the road. You're able to see what's going in on in front of you as opposed to if you're wanting to know if a car's coming in, maybe you're not using some sort of a mirror. Uh, I've never used a mirror before. I've always just looked over my shoulder. And even with a ton of bike handling experience, a ton of bike riding, anytime you look over your shoulder, chances are you're going to veer just a little bit. And if you're looking over your left shoulder to see if there's cars coming from behind you, you're veering into traffic. And if there's a car coming up that you didn't see, all of a sudden you're kind of coming out into their, their lane. True. Okay. But yeah, safety is uh, paramount when you're out there on the road. You want to do everything you can to mitigate any possible run-ins with cars. And I think that this is a great device. Uh, gives you peace of mind. The second one, when you're riding out on uh, like a country road, uh, where we live, there are a lot of great country roads to ride on. There's generally speaking, no, you're Very lucky. Little shoulder. You're lucky if you even have a fog line, let alone a shoulder. So you're out in the road and you're taking the lane. Well, it's nice to know when a car's coming up behind you when you're taking the whole lane on a country road. You don't want to get run over by some big giant truck that's going right. to you know, come rolling coal on you anyway. But you want to be able to get over. So um, when you're on roads that just don't have bike lanes and you're in the lane, it's kind of nice to know when to get over and when you can go back in. So that's number two. Number three is fellow cyclists can see and hear what's going on with your radar as well. If you are riding in a group and a couple of you have the Varia radar, mm -hmm. the cyclists that are behind you, obviously they can see the light, but if, you're, if the light is on solid mode, when a car approaches, it starts to blink. 
And so a cyclist riding behind you can see that it's starting to blink and know that there's actually a car coming if they don't have radar themselves. Yep. And uh, I think you mentioned, but there's an audible beep on your head unit yeah, as well. So you kind of like beeps. start to get this Pavlovian response. You hear somebody's radar beep, you think, all right, car behind. There's a car so, behind us. Um, and it's just nice too, because if you're riding in a group and I have that, nobody else does. I know a car's coming, I can yell car back, everybody can get in line and then we let the car go by and Correct. We're, we're all good to go. Number four, it's got a much greater adjustability than traditional lights. So the other option with not using a radar is just having a blinking light. Just a standard which, blinking light. Yep. Which we recommend yep. because it's better it's, than nothing. It's better than nothing. Exactly. The difference with the these is the several different modes that you can set them in and they have they have different lumens. They shine brighter during the day in day mode than at night mode it shines lower or in peloton mode so you're not blinding all your friends riding with you. It shines even less. So yep. different adjustability. That's yep. a great. Point. And I think on the whole, I think once you have it set up in the right mode, it will actually last a bit longer than a traditional blinky light. Uh, yeah, well, 16 hours. That's pretty stinking long. I've found that a lot of the other lights that I've used will last four or five, maybe six hours if I'm lucky. To know that this guy's gonna last me six hours or 16 hours if I'm doing uh, Seattle to Portland and maybe riding back in one day. Right. <laughs> it's gonna be good to it's go. It's gonna be okay. Our last one is let's do our best to cohabitate with motorists. Correct. We all know if you've ridden on the road before, you know that there's this kind of like cats versus dogs thing going on out there. So we want to do our best as cyclists to make peace, right. <laughs> get out of the way um, and say, hey, we're right here and I see you coming up and I'm going to get over as far as I possibly can so that you can safely pass me. You know, I've had motorists tell me that they've seen that kind of behavior happen before and they appreciate that. So they come up and sometimes you'll hear somebody yelling and saying, hey, this darn cyclist was sitting in the middle of the road and I had to sit behind him and they'll make it sound like, you know, they'll turn 15 seconds right. into five hours. The moral of the story is if they come up on that same person and now they get as far over the, as they possibly can and the car can safely go around. That just creates a little bit of goodwill between cyclists and motorists. And I think that that's highly important Correct. for all of us to cohabitate. I agree. The roads. My review on this thing is two thumbs up. Uh, two thumbs up with me as well. I feel naked when I forgot to charge it. Yep. <laughs> Consider getting one. We have some links that are down in uh, comments if you want to go check those out. We do carry those here at the Cycling Lab. If you maybe want a special deal on those, shoot us an email. Yep. Yeah. Um, you can shoot it to info at dialedcycling.com. Again, Yippee! these things are super simple, super cool, and go get yourself one. <laughs> All right. Bye for now.